All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, let's uh, pray and begin today's class. Uh, let me just go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again, Lord, for your powerful word in our lives. Lord, thank you that your word is a lamp to our feet, Lord, giving us direction. And uh, Lord, helping us, Father God, to, um, uh, Lord, have our walk, Lord, in accordance uh, with, with what you desire and you please. So, Father God, we pray that you will help us, that we will learn from what is being taught. And above all, Lord, that we will live out whatever we learn. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in the last class, we touched upon connected words to faith. And we said that along with faith, hope is important uh, and also love. So when we talk about hope, we, we said that hope is something which is in the future. Hope comes before faith first there is hope and then we develop faith and faith is what helps us pull the manifestation of the promise into our present so this is broadly what we discussed in the last class and then we went on to another connected aspect which is love and we said that everything must be rooted and grounded in love or it should be motivated by love so we will look at this passage from first corinthians chapter 13 today so those of us who have um you know like i think most of us have nkjv version isn't it so let's read from there let us read um let us read at least three verses to begin with so first corinthians 13 verse 1 and 2 and then verse 13 can somebody read it So, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not okay, uh, parade. One and two first, and then okay. verse thirteen. Sorry, sorry. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have, I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And eight, thirteen, thirteen, verse thirteen, verse thirteen. And now abide faith, hope, love; these three, but the greatest of these is love. Uh, in the last class, we discussed that there are different kinds of love. And in 1 Corinthians 13, the word love which is used is from the Greek language. Uh, and it is the word agape. And agape is God kind of love. So we must understand that the kind of love that God has, the kind of love that God gives is quite different from the love that we know. Uh, exercised among us people. So the God kind of love, how is the God kind of love? The life of Jesus and the work of Jesus expresses that love. So we can understand, even when we consider the Father. God so loved the world that he, what? God so loved the world that he did what? gave okay gave so you see when god loves what does god do he gives it's a very mature love with which god loves and that's what we have to understand agape is god kind of love the love that gives how much does it give think about jesus dying on the cross even when it takes a sacrifice, God gave. So it's, it's extreme. Like for our minds, we give when it's comfortable. We give when it's convenient. We have 
two rupees okay i'll give one rupee right not beyond that if it's going to hurt us we don't want to give but when god loves he gives and how much does he give sacrificially it cost him his very life for him to give us his son and yet what did god do he gave right so this is the kind of love that god has and this is the kind of love that first corinthians 13 talks about agape what are the other features of agape the features of agape are it is unconditional unconditional romans 5 says for a good man somebody will be willing to die but christ died for us sinners can you imagine it's not worth dying for ungodly sinful wicked people but christ died for sinners which tells us that he loved us in spite of who we are he loved us knowing all the problems the sinfulness the evil that we carried why because he wanted to change us and the love of god is very powerful because god loved us like that and he died for us that love sets us free okay so it's not a it's not an enabling love which you know says okay fine you be wicked you be sinful no problem no no it's not that kind of a love it's a powerful love which is able to bring us out of the chains that we are in so it's unconditional yes but it carries the power for transformation that's the amazing unconditional love of god what else about the love of god the love of god is eternal eternal right he is our everlasting father he loves us forever that's what scriptures tell us he will never leave us he will never forsake us okay even if your father and mother forsake you i will not forsake you that's the way that god loves us where it is eternal the love that he has for us so this is the kind of love that first corinthians 13 is talking about a very different love as compared to the human love that you and i may be exposed to because in our mindset when we say love it's probably just a feeling it's it's like transactional you give me i give you you make me feel good i make you feel good right but that's not the god kind of love the god kind of love is very different it's very very different agape the way god loves the quality of god's love and so when we read first corinthians 13 that's the love that he wants us to have that's the kind of love that he wants us to walk in is it easy or difficult difficult at least for me i'm thinking how how god how to love like you but scriptures tell us romans 5 5 that the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy spirit so the holy spirit becomes the source of agape love in our hearts and in our lives so if there is a source can you and i love the way god loves of course because it's not in our own strength but by the release of the um the the love by the holy spirit in our hearts that we can love the way god loves okay so we all have an idea about the god kind of love now let's come back to what was read and it says uh, though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love i have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal what does it mean it means that though i am exercising the gifts of the holy spirit what are the gifts there tongues right tongues of men and angels i am speaking in tongues but if i have not love the god kind of love then my praying in tongues is just noise that's what it says okay so we're not 
playing down the gifts of the spirit no because before this chapter first corinthians 12 paul is talking about gifts of the spirit first corinthians 14 he says earnestly desire the gifts the best gifts so is he saying that gifts are not important no he is not but what he is saying is more importantly we do ministry right we do ministry we flow in the gifts more importantly we need a heart of love if we don't have love as our motivation then whatever we do is pointless i'm not saying it the scripture is saying it okay let's go on look at verse 2 it says and though i have the gift of prophecy and understanding understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though i have all faith does it sound like a very uh, effective christian or an effective believer yes isn't it because there's prophecy there's understanding of all mysteries meaning lot of revelation there is knowledge faith faith that can move mountains it says verse 2 have all faith so that i could move mountains but but there's another clause but have not love so very effective very powerful a ministering believer but have not love can have all faith that we can move mountains but have not love so here's the point though we talk so much about faith if it's not coming from a heart of love all our ministry all our believing you know all our sharing of the gospel look at the word that is being used here i am what does it say nothing i am nothing you know that word nothing in the greek um the word that is used there if we look at its exact meaning it means zero its exact meaning is not even one which means zero i do everything for god but i don't have love then i am zero that's what the passage says right so while we talk so much about faith we want to make sure that we talk about love as well otherwise all our believing all our faith walk you know all our trying to move the mountains is in god's sight it's non existent in god's sight it's not valuable in god's sight he's saying yeah okay so so what right so motivation by love will enable us to exercise our faith more powerfully it will help us to exercise an effective faith and that is why we must always ask the question you know uh, this is an important question uh, again all this will be discussed in ministers foundation when we are serving the lord we have to ask why why am i doing this you know i'm attending bible college why am i attending bible college i am uh, learning the scriptures i'm learning to flow in the gifts of the spirit why am i doing it i'm preaching why am i doing it i'm a pastor why am i a pastor tough questions because god is more concerned with the motives of the heart why if the answers are the right ones like i want to honor god i want to love god because he saved me from a you know like a very evil life he pulled me out he gave me a new life i want to serve him i want to uh, you know bless his name uh, i want to whatever i have experienced i want people to experience these are the right motives but if the answers to our question why am i doing what i am doing is other things right like oh i just want a degree i just want i just want people to know i just want any other reason what happens right what happens what does the scripture say we are nothing 
when we don't have the right motivation and not having the right motivation will you know make our faith ineffective as far as what the bible says okay so that is the reason when we are cultivating faith we must also cultivate the god kind of love in our journey with the lord so let's come back let's come back to first corinthians chapter 13 and uh, we'll quickly read so if someone can read verses 4 to 8 it gives us the characteristics of the god kind of love what is what is that what does that love look like and i'm sure uh, many of us will find it very different from the kind of love that the world talks about so i request somebody to read it and read it slowly so that we can uh, concentrate on each word love suffers long and is kind love does not envy love does not parrot itself is not puffed up does not behave rudely does not seek its own is not provoked thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things love never fails but whether there are prophecies they will fail whether they are uh, there are tongues they will cease whether there is knowledge it will vanish away sure so um, as we look at what is being said about this love i'll just explain a little bit um, and uh, yeah, because actually the, the session is not about love, it's about faith. But we are just trying to understand what God kind of love is. So, uh, love suffers long simply means that love is patient. Okay. Love does not envy means it is not jealous. Love does not parade itself means that love is not boastful competing or trying to outdo the other person so i'm i'm uh, sharing with us you know from a paraphrase version which is also there in our notes so if you want to look at it you can uh, now love is not puffed up simply means that love is not arrogant okay love is not uh, vain glorying or sort of uh, bringing fame to ourselves and uh, want to live in the glory of, of uh, what people say about us. And then it also says, love does not behave rudely. So in other words, we can look at it as uh, our behavior. When we're walking in God kind of love, we're not rude with people uh, or with God. And uh, we're not ill-mannered, right? We're not ill-mannered. What else can we see? about this God kind of love. It does not seek its own. That means that it is not self-centered. Okay, it's not self-centered. Um, it is also not self-seeking or uh, self-promoting, right? So that is not the God kind of love. Uh, we read that it is not provoked. It is not provoked means that it is not easily irritable or angered so when we are like that we know that we are not walking in god kind of love because god kind of love is not easily irritable or angered then let's read on uh, apart from this we see that love does not rejoice in iniquity but rejoices in the truth so that's very interesting uh, because sometimes as far as we are concerned, love would be, oh, people are doing it, may, doing something wrong. It's okay. Leave it. Leave it. Cover up. Cover up. Okay. Uh, they will be fine. But what is the God kind of love? Look at it. The God kind of love is very bold because it says it does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. So God kind of love will not cover up. God kind of love will say, hey, this is wrong. This is not correct. This shouldn't be happening. But what? It rejoices in the truth. This is righteousness. This is holiness. These are the right things. This is how one should be. 
so the god kind of love is bold it's not a cover up love right so um, that again is is one of its qualities and then we can see that it bears all things bears all things meaning it's 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 got some endurance in it when we are walking with the god kind of love we are able to endure because even god he endures with us and uh, it believes all things hopes all things endures all things so it shows us that the god kind of love seeks the best there's there is uh, you know light at the end of the tunnel that's why the love is still working because it sees the positive which will happen right uh, in in the life of that person or uh, in any given situation so it's hoping for the best it's not hoping for the worst it's hoping for the best so that is how god loves us because he is being he is being patient with us he is enduring with us it's because he is looking at the good that can come out so that's why he's being kind to us right so that's how we should love when we are being kind and patient with people enduring because we are hoping there will be a change there will be you know some uh, something good coming out of this person's life or uh, uh, behavior so that's how this love works there are a couple of other things that we'll quickly look at it says love never fails okay so love never fails meaning um it will help us to fulfill god's purpose for our lives when we are walking in love we will not fail in fulfilling god's will or in fulfilling god's purposes okay so that's what it means love will not fail love will not fail us it may look like oh it's not working out you know we are being uh, loving with people in our ministry loving with our team it's not working out but hold on because god's when we are operating in the god kind of love it will not fail us when god told us to um, you know emulate him to display his glory it will happen changes will come god's love in our lives it will not fail god's love will not fail it can't fail because that is the characteristic of god's love uh, and then you know it says all the other things might fail so you have uh, prophecies tongues knowledge everything will vanish away it says one day all those things will be gone but what will remain the god kind of love the god kind of love which helps us walk in the will of god the god kind of love that makes us fruitful so the, this is the confidence you and i can have if i'm walking in the god kind of love i have the right motivation what i'm doing is productive it's not zero right i will fulfill god's purpose for my life i will be fruitful in every good work i will be blessed so uh we can pray and ask god god help me to have this base to have you know the god kind of love in my life now if we don't have this kind of love i'll just talk about the opposites of this um you know it's it's very subtle but it can happen for example let's say in a team when we are working together uh we do well we we do our work with excellence but if the motivation is not love it could be competition where we are thinking that if i don't work hard they might take the prize so competition we saw right envy jealousy self centeredness all those things can also motivate us to serve well so that could be my intention or our intention could be that we want to put somebody down you know we see somebody coming into our team and they are extremely talented and we feel insecure we feel like wow this person is better than me what if they take over some day what if i lose my job all these things happen to us isn't it or unforgiveness bitterness in our common relationships we hold on to grudges we hold on to oh that's this is what they said this is what they did uh, serves them right you know something happens to them our mind works like that they did they deserve it but that's not the god kind of love in practical application this is how it is so we have to check our hearts you know what is my heart saying in the situation that brother who hurt me is going through a tough time am i saying okay god you know do do more let him 
lose everything is that how i'm thinking or am i thinking god i have forgiven him oh, we don't know why all this is happening you bless him you know jesus said right like you need to pray even for your persecutors so what is that walking in the god kind of love it's not easy it's difficult but good thing is we don't have to do it on our own we can depend on the holy spirit and the holy spirit becomes our empowerer so that we can walk in the god kind of love so this is how it looks in practical everyday life in the ministry also right we've talked about it when we did uh, um laying the axe to the root self centeredness laying the axe to the root of self where we can do good ministry but motivation can be competition anger fame nobody will know nobody will know right only we know so which is why from a very early stage in our christian walk we must be accountable to god and accountable to ourselves accountable to god and accountable to ourselves nobody will know what our heart is the best of our people around us may think oh well meaning very good you know you've done well but only we know in our hearts what is our intention that is why we must be transparent before god because god sees all like how david prayed you know in psalm 51 he said search me oh god you know know me know my ways and then he talks about you know he prays to god give me a clean heart oh god so that's how we can pursue a heart of love and we can pursue a heart of faith okay so these are the characteristics of faith and we can depend on the holy spirit to help us uh and give us this kind of uh love now when the holy spirit is at work in our hearts love is also fruit of the spirit galatians chapter 5 talks about the fruit of the spirit so uh, if one of us can turn to that passage galatians 5 verse 22 and verse 23 but the fruit of spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control mm. again search there is no law and those who are christ have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires okay so let's understand this i see some questions in the chat i'll come back so here it says that the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control so what does this mean it means that every time we say no to the flesh and every time we say yes to the spirit of god all these virtues will start to manifest through our lives so a maturing believer or a matured believer will carry the fruit of the spirit we can see love joy peace patience goodness faithfulness right so all of that self control in the life of that person how did how did they get there they got there by saying yes to the spirit every time each time the holy spirit says you know he convicts us he guides us he speaks to us we say okay holy spirit i'll walk in the spirit i won't walk in the flesh i walk in the spirit that we keep making choices like that and the fruit of the spirit starts being displayed does it take time for a for a plant to give fruits yes okay so let's not get worried if we look at our lives and we are feeling oh god you know i don't have that much patience or i don't have that much self control you know look at that other person they have patience they have self control no problem keep yielding to the holy spirit and slowly what happens the fruit will come when we have a plant we take care of it pour water keep you know nurturing it pruning it after some time 
fruit will come fruit has to come because it's on good ground it is good seed god's word is good seed in our lives so fruit has to come it won't go anywhere it has to come it will come but we just have to hold on so in all of our lives god gives us that assurance it will come it will manifest just hold on just keep saying yes to the holy spirit keep saying yes to the word of god and we will manifest the fruit of the spirit and it's a sign of maturity okay it's a sign of growing up can you imagine you know a little kid okay when the kid is 2 uh, uh, years old what does the mom do she'll feed the kid right so feed the kid 3 years old feed the kid it keeps happening maybe till 5 or something like that uh, they may do it but if the mom has to do that when the child is uh, you know 25 years old how would you like that we'll all be like what is wrong you know why can't he or she eat on their own why does their mom have to feed them see there is it's there is a need for maturing and growing up when we are grown up we have to be like grown up we can't still be doing the things which we did when we were babies or kids it, it's not nice anymore right same holds true in our christian walk in the beginning yeah there are all these issues okay understandable time passes by we are journeying with the lord if those issues don't change it's not nice anymore at some point the transformation has to show right and that's what we we must ask god god i'm growing let the fruit of the spirit manifest through my life for oh god because we can't be like the tantrum throwing you know when like three year old you don't give a toy the whole house comes down screaming shouting go blue right why because that's how a three year old is but imagine a 25 year old does that you will be like you need a whack right so we can't be immature always and say god i'm like that only god will be like sorry i've given you the word the work of my spirit is there where is the fruit fruit of the spirit as we are walking with him it will start to manifest we can't remain you know uh, immature any more so that is about love the fruit of the spirit will manifest in our lives now here are a few more things connected to faith that are so precious so very precious uh, first timothy chapter 1 verse 5 can someone pick that up and read it now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart from a good conscience and from sincere faith yes so along with faith he said we need love but along with love when it comes to serving the lord here paul tells timothy timothy always remember pure heart good conscience sincere faith it's it's a you know like a dynamite combination we can have faith but if we lack the other two good conscience what is conscience what is conscience in a voice we we may call it as a inner voice now we have the voice of the holy spirit where the holy spirit speaks to us and guides us but god has built us with an inner compass you know if we we all know compass so if you hold it like it'll point to the north it'll just move to the north wherever you go you want to identify that's where it'll point in the same way the conscience of a man is the inner compass everyone created with a conscience even if we don't know god there is a conscience because that's how god created us and a good conscience will guide us to the right things so when we don't do things right whether god says on he doesn't say a good conscience will say 
you know, you didn't do it right. You didn't have the right motivation. You know, you didn't. It will speak to us. It will convict us. It will show us the direction. Now, you and I as believers should not silence the conscience. We shouldn't say, Shh, don't talk. Keep quiet. I don't like it. You know, I'm not feeling good that you're talking to me like this. Don't ever silence the conscience because God gave us the conscience. We may not like it. It's her, it may be painful. Oh, why is my conscience hurting me? I want to do that, so I did it. But conscience will tell us, you didn't do it right. Never quiet, quiet the conscience, quieten the conscience. Why? Because if we keep doing it, the scripture talks about hardened heart, talks about seared conscience. So people who keep silencing the conscience, no. I will not listen. I will not listen. I know I'm doing wrong, but I will not change. When we keep going like that, what happens? The conscience goes silent. We may be doing something terrible, but the conscience will never tell us. It's like dead. It won't work. And that's a scary place for any human being to be. Conscience is not speaking to us anymore. Right? But we need a healthy conscience. A healthy conscience will tell us. It will show us and say, no, this is not the direction. You know, or you need to be going in this way. So a good conscience. For us, as we serve the Lord, always have a conscience. Whether people guide us or not, my conscience should tell me, yeah, Nancy, you're right. No, you're wrong. I should listen to my conscience. And also listen to God's voice. These two things are very, very important good conscience never lose conscience okay so sincere faith good conscience and what is the third one there in that verse pure heart pure heart pure heart again you know going with the holiness of god the righteousness of god the right motivation and all of that so having a pure heart so if we have this combination we're serving the lord with a pure heart good conscience sincere faith Nobody can stop our progress in Christ. We will go forward. We will uh, achieve many things for God's glory. So have this combination of doing things. Okay. Now, uh, let me quickly come here to um, the chat. And uh, Shri Raj, okay, Shri Raj has a message. And then I can see Saubhagya, your message. And Brother Venkateshan, if you have any question, you can ask later. Um, so she says, ma'am, we love some of our family members, but if they don't love us, then what to do? Okay. Yeah. So how do we respond to a situation where we care and love, but they don't love us? Okay. Well, um, I think the, what we discussed till now, God kind of love. Description of God, kind of love, unconditional, eternal, sacrificial. So we must still love them, uh, Sabhagya. That's the answer. Right? Because that is the God kind of love. We must still love them. But because we're saying this, it's not that you know we cover up their wrong and all. No, because again, that's not God kind of love. Covering up their wrong is not God kind of love. But we love them to see them blessed to see them transformed. So whatever it takes to love them like that, I think we have to uh, love them. Any, any follow-up question to that? Please let me know. Yeah, and we can depend on the Holy Spirit to help us do that. Okay, so uh, Brother Venkateshan, you wanted to ask something? Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Uh, let me ask you one question. Yes. Uh, whenever we fall in temptation, mm -hmm. how it is possible to believe our living God? When we lost faith, how it is possible to believe Him? Okay. Uh, uh, could you please come again? You said whenever we fall in temptation, is it? Yeah, yeah. If When we fall in temptation, then? How to believe God? How can how, we believe God? How, what can we do? So ah, what we, can we do? 
Yes. So when we fall in temptation, we must come out of the temptation. That's the first thing. So how do we come out of the temptation? There are some simple practical things such as get away from the temptation. Flee lustful, uh, you know, youthful lusts, scripture says. So flee means get away from it. So whatever that temptation is, we, we need to eliminate our access to it or we must not be in that zone. Get out of, of that place. That is one simple practical thing to do. Then apart from that, we can use the word of God because that's how Jesus countered every temptation. He spoke back to the devil. Okay, so brother, I, if we do these two, we'll see a lot of, um, you know, that there'll be strength to come out of it. Is that okay or you want to know anything more? Uh, I think uh, temptations are many. Spiritual temptations, uh, physical, financial, and like that, uh, it goes on. Whenever we are being tempted by evil spirits, uh, satanic forces, uh, yes. how can we work on that uh, evil spirits? Yeah, so that's what I shared, brother. One is to uh, get away from the that place of influence. Second is, uh, and when I mean that, I, let me just explain. Like, for example, if we are very tempted to watch our phone all the time, simple practical thing is put it on silent when you don't need it or just keep it away from you because you don't need it right so a practical thing like that keep it out of sight or you be away from it so that helps a lot now apart from that using the word of god brother so the more we use it we will see though as you said there are a lot of temptations uh we can overcome it right um so, so I, I really hope that, uh, yeah, that answers the question. Anyway, we will talk more about temptation when we uh, study believer's authority in detail. So I'll uh, move on to the next person here. OK, Elkana is saying, what about those of them that after our life okay so uh, with regard to the god kind of love isn't it i think those who are after our life uh david had many such experiences so when you read the psalms you know uh, he says uh, even in psalm 27 he says the nations have surrounded me nobody like I am in the middle of conflict from every side uh, in the name of the Lord. So what did he do? He, he depended on God. So I think the most important thing is to make ourselves strong in God when we are facing opposition like this. Okay? Be very strong in the Lord. Uh, be very, you know, like uh, keep saying, God, speak to me. So that from the word God speaks, he gives us prophetic words. So what happens is that inner strength that we develop in the Lord, that is what will help us in times like this. When the whole world seems like it's against us, but we are rooted in the Lord so strong that nothing can shake us. That was David's experience, right? So to have that kind of personal strength in the Lord and to depend on the Lord. That is number one. Now, apart from that, um, you know, it's, it's also because we learned about love, we can always pray for our persecutors and enemies also. Yeah, what they're doing is not correct, but we can say, God, you know, you bless them, you protect me. So these kind of prayers we can pray. Uh, Elkana, I hope that it uh, helps you. Let me know. Okay, we have a couple of minutes left. If there's anything to ask, we can discuss. If not, we'll close. Okay, Alkana is fine with that. Okay, Anusha, 
if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother wife and children brothers and sisters yes even their own life such a person cannot be my disciple what does this mean can you please describe it okay Uh, so anusha uh, at face value uh, yeah elkana are you saying something yeah please how am i going to be sure that my assignment is submitted because it's uh, i'm not sure i've submitted my assignment uh, uh, three days ago so uh, please can is there anything that you can uh, you let me know maybe the... assignment submitted Yes, if you've hit the submit button, it is submitted. There is a notification that will also tell you <coughs> that uh, you know the assignment has gone through. So please check that, and that will convey to you. Okay, if there's an issue, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Okay. Okay, Martin. Yeah. So let me quickly answer Anusha's question. Okay. Thank so, you. So um, Luke, yes, Luke fourteen verse twenty six. It uh it sounds like jesus is asking us to hate our family isn't it it sounds like that like if you love god then you should hate your father your mother but see whenever we try to interpret a scripture we should consider all the other scriptures right now if you look at one more scripture from first timothy chapter 5 and verse 8 it says that anyone who does not care for his own family uh you know he has denied his faith and is worse than an unbeliever now how what is this on one side jesus is saying hate your family and follow me the other side is saying if you don't care you're worse than an unbeliever so what's the point the point is jesus is not asking us to hate our family what he's trying to say is we must love god more than our earthly relationships that's the meaning so anusha i hope that has addressed your question that's how we will interpret that okay philip is asking love is needed for flow in gifts of the spirit yes uh, philip um, it is needed because we know that the gifts of the spirit require faith and uh, for faith to be effective we need love and and also paul wrote about love while talking about the gifts so we need love so that is the answer i hope um, you're fine with that okay philip says he's okay so let's pray then let's close um, we just have one minute left anyone with the mic could you lead in prayer the heavenly father thank you lord for this day lord lord i surrender this day into your hands lord thank you lord for this lessons that you have learned lord lord uh, we have to be like you lord lord uh, that love and patience lord every pure heart lord lord guide us in every step we take lord lord direct our thoughts and plans lord lord to you father i give all the honor glory and to you father i give all the honor praise and glory in jesus name i pray amen, amen. thank you thank you everyone god bless